Smartphones have become very important and nearly ubiquitous in our society. And it's no wonder, because they pack so much incredible technology into a tiny, portable package. As a result of this, they have replaced many of the tools we would otherwise carry. One of the most important of these tools now carried by phones is often overlooked, the flashlight. Apple has a reputation for producing good cameras for their phones, of which the flashlight is essentially an extension. In this video, I will be looking at both the iPhone 11 and the XR, which possess very similar flashlights. These phones are built extremely well and are clearly designed to impress. There is no doubt that these are beautiful devices, with richly colored glass rear panels that give a sophisticated, high-tech style. The chassis of the phone is a finely milled and nicely anodized aluminum with three buttons and a silent switch around the edge. Along the bottom are two small speaker grills and a proprietary lightning port. The front of the device has a notched 6.1 inch backlit LCD touch display, which gets pretty bright and displays beautiful colors. Unfortunately, the build here is more attractive than practical. The phones are slippery in the hand and very delicate. I would avoid dropping these at all costs. They do, however, sport an impressive waterproof rating. The phones are exactly the same size and weight, being 7.5 centimeters wide and 15 centimeters tall. They weigh 194 grams and are less than a centimeter thick. Obviously, these weren't made for flashlight duty, and the light is really an evolution of a simple camera flash. I suppose I should mention the cameras, one of the main selling points of the iPhone. The 11 uses two, a wide and an ultra wide, while the XR uses a single wide-angle camera. They are fine for phone cameras, but not so great compared to a real camera. The LEDs used for the flash are found on the rear of the phone, situated alongside the cameras they are intended to service. On the iPhone 11, the cameras, flash, and microphone are encased in a section of glass raised from the main rear panel. The 11 uses a pair of what Apple calls their True Tone Flash LEDs, which appear to be manufactured by Nichia. The XR uses four similar LEDs, and in both models, the Flash uses a custom TIR optic that maintains a flat profile on the glass surface. iOS is well known for its simplicity and ease of use, or at least that's what everybody says, but I might just be a complete moron because I always seem to struggle with it and the flashlight is the perfect exemplification of this. There are two main ways to activate the light. One, while waking the phone from sleep, and pressing and holding the flashlight button on the lower left corner of the screen. Alternatively, while the phone is on, swiping down from the top right of the screen will bring up the control center, from which the light can be activated with a tap of the icon. Pressing and holding the flashlight icon will bring up a control interface that allows for four separate brightness levels to be selected. While this is simple in theory, for some reason I tend to struggle with the implementation in these newer phones that lack a physical home button. Pressing the light from the lock screen just doesn't work sometimes, and I think I'm just too clumsy and forceful to properly activate it. In fact, for me this is reflected in the whole rest of the user interface, and I honestly struggle to accomplish anything with these phones due to my inability to come to grips with the various touch gestures. Alas, everyone else seems to get along just fine, so it's probably just me. I can't... I can't use my flashlight, I don't know why. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is it because my battery is at 14%? Quite possibly. I always say that your smartphone light is there to help you find a real flashlight. And the iPhone doesn't do much to convince me otherwise. Optically, performance is good, with the TIR optics providing an excellent smooth beam almost without artifacts, though the center of the beam is slightly darker than the outer edges. Impressive for such a tiny light. Color is a nice neutral white of about 4500K, and the tint leans ever so slightly magenta. Between this natural color and a decently high CRI, the beam does indeed produce nice, pleasing color tones. Apple claims that the 11 provides a superior beam to previous models, but my opinion here is mixed. The light is indeed cleaner than the XR, with a smoother yet slightly more concentrated beam However, these LEDs had a much more noticeable green tint, and honestly, I preferred the color coming from the older XR. 
These differences are very minor and don't impact practical usability. The completely floody nature of the beam is excellent for close-up work and is usually great for indoor use. However, it completely lacks any meaningful throw and becomes borderline useless outside. Normally, I do like floody beams, but the iPhone is just not capable of pushing out enough light to compensate for its low intensity. And that leads us on to the actual output of these lights. I measured the iPhone XR at 47 lumens on its highest mode, which is actually a decent amount of light, but has a maximum intensity of only 17.8 candela, which provides a mere 8 meters of beam distance. Advertising claims would have one believe that the iPhone 11 is brighter, but to my surprise, I actually measured an even lower output out of this phone, with a maximum brightness of only 30 lumens, and an intensity of 13.5 candela, providing a 7.4 meter beam distance. The differences in both color and output leads me to assert that the slightly older iPhone XR flashlight is simply superior to the iPhone 11's in every meaningful way, providing higher output, greater throw, and a more pleasing tint. This is surprising to me, as it seems like Apple took pride in the updates they made to the 11's camera flash, but in testing, it just wasn't as good as the older model. One similarity between both iPhones is their poor mode spacing. The brightness levels on the XR are linear in their progression and provide little variance to the eye, and there's not really any reason to use the two modes between low and high. The iPhone 11 has an interesting spacing that doesn't make much sense to me, as there's a big jump between the middle two modes, but the high is barely any brighter. However, it does have a lower low, which is appreciated. Both lights are missing a proper ultra-low mode. Technically, the screen itself can function as a super-low illumination source, but because it is not a true white LED, it will provide abysmally low CRI. Not a big deal, I doubt there's anyone out there who cares about this, but I can't imagine it would be particularly difficult to add a lower low mode to the default flashlight function. Because there's not a big range in brightness in either light, I would probably just set it to whatever level you like best and then leave it, as both have mode memory. Battery performance across the range was pretty impressive. I can't realistically estimate battery performance as there are way too many variables that affect the actual battery life and usage, but I did find the light to be well regulated, providing the same output as the battery died down, only dropping once the battery level reached about 10%. Thermal performance is fine, these lights aren't powerful enough to really overheat. However, they are very small and thus, if they are covered while on, they can generate quite a bit of heat and can be painful to the touch. I doubt, however, that they're capable of actually burning it. Apple does not provide any useful information on these LEDs, only labeling them with vague marketing terms. I was not able to find the exact information on the LEDs used in either phone, but found evidence enough to believe that these are emitters manufactured by Nichia. While no specific parts are named, Apple has many components manufactured for them by this company, including the backlights used in their screens. These emitters are very reminiscent of some of Nichia's more familiar LEDs, both in their color and performance. Overall, I think we can all agree that this is pretty much a pointless video. The iPhone makes for a terrible flashlight, and I would never recommend it, ever, period. It provides a low output and has no useful throw, while providing somewhat decent color and not much else. The build of the iPhone itself may be pretty, but the device is very delicate and is not ergonomic for general flashlight usage. Compared to even a cheap keychain light, the iPhone camera flash is a joke. However, to say the light is useless is simply untrue, and its plain utility must be acknowledged. The iPhone flashlight is a very interesting device in that it essentially evolved from something else entirely, originally designed as a camera flash not even intended for continuous usage. In fact, it wasn't until iOS 7 in 2013 that Apple even implemented a native flashlight function. Because nearly everyone uses a smartphone now, this has become quite possibly the most popular flashlight on the planet. It's pretty impressive really, and I can only hope that smartphone manufacturers continue to improve their flashlights as they design newer products. Still. I stand by my belief that smartphone lights are really only useful for finding a proper flashlight in the dark, and neither the iPhone XR nor the 11 are significantly better than other smartphone flashlights I've used. That's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know how useful it is to anyone, but it was pretty fun to make. If you thought the video was good, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel, and maybe even sharing the video with others who might find it interesting. I really appreciate it if you've watched it this far. This isn't really my normal content, but I thought it would be cool to make. And who knows, if it performs well, I might make another of these in the future. We'll see. Anyways, thanks for your continuing support. I'll see you in the next video. Unless I die.